I think it's kind of amazing what happens when you physically link two facilities or two locations together. I see this campus evolving to a point where we have many, many more drones operating routinely and on demand. A system where there's essentially drone ports at our major facilities, possibly even at other physicians' offices and things like that. I foresee a time where they're in common use every day. This is the first medical package delivery system in the country. The drone itself is autonomous. Over the longer term, the system that we're using, Matternet system, is intended and designed to be completely automated from end to end, including automated ground stations on both sides. This is as close to a magic technology as you can get. You scan it what you want to send, put it into a box, and it shows up on the other end. The current legacy, the current system, which is widely in use, is, is couriers, trucks and vans, both routed and on demand. But it's just a highly inefficient system because of the realities of healthcare delivery. So this is Raleigh, this is the belt line, and this is the outer belt line of Raleigh. The main hospital where we are now is here, and then we've got um, the Cary Hospital here, and the North Hospital here. And eventually, essentially, we'd have a network connecting these three hospitals and then these um, health plexes back to, the, back to each hospital or individual hospitals. It's a very short distance right now. It's only about a third of a mile on a more or less an hourly trip basis, Monday through Friday, during business hours, just as a place to start. But we would like to see it grow to that level, to be a functioning network connecting our major facilities together. Everyone is sort of of two minds about drones. and There is that hesitance around, it's a new technology, how is this gonna be used? Are we really gonna see just a sky full of drones in 40, 50 years? Versus what we did after Hurricane Florence when we were using drones in North Carolina to survey floodwaters in a way that had never been done before. It really showed people how UAS technology can really be for good and that as long as we're careful with it and we're safe about it, people are in favor of it. The drone itself that we're using at Wake Med is relatively small, relatively quiet, and completely cameraless. Part of that is for HIPAA compliance. You know, as soon as you start shining a camera on a hospital where there's gonna be people there, you run into possible HIPAA violations, and so the, the drone that we're flying at Wake Med doesn't have a camera on it. What's been amazing to me, even, as somebody who understands the technology, is how inconspicuous it really can be. Once they're at altitude and they're moving, it's very difficult, very difficult to notice them. I think most people assume the technology feels very invasive, but in, in reality, it often does not. I mean, as long as it's not flying into somebody's backyard. For our program specifically, the two big regulatory issues were beyond visual line of sight flying and flights over people. And both of those are obviously a huge safety concern. And so the main things we came into this looking to address is the ability to fly drones safely without the pilot being in visual contact, and then being confident enough in the technology and in the hardware to fly it over people at a regular basis. I think if you look back historically, the technologies that we live with now, including vehicles, when they first showed up, they were controversial and they represent a new layer of technology that has to be managed in a different way. It, it's hard to know exactly what the future is gonna look like, you know, because this, this technology is so new. I mean, it's really only been a part of people's lives for the last couple of years. I think this is one layer of technology that's a part of a bigger evolution around mobility and automation. I, I foresee sort of a new layer of mobility that supports healthcare systems and other businesses. Mm -hmm.